your man, Louis T. Welcome to this Louis T. Network exclusive, ranking the eight head coaching vacancies and the four GM openings. Now let's talk about these eight job openings. And here's what I assess. Here's what I look at, right? When I'm thinking about a job opening, um, if I'm a GM, I'm taking into consideration everything from the roster, the cap space, um, the draft capital, ownership, how stable is the franchise? These are all things that matter to me. As a head coach, cap space doesn't matter as much. Draft capital, eh, it depends on what the situation is. That, that may come into play. But really, do you have a quarterback? And what's the roster look like? And how do I fit into the equation, right? How stable is the ownership group? How stable is the owner? How stable is the, the franchise as, as a whole? Because I don't want to be Frank Wright taking a job, thinking it's a five-year deal, moving my family to that area only to be fired 11 games in. I don't want to do that, right? So clearly these are things that would matter to me as a head coach. So let's go through where each of these teams rank in my estimation, some of this is um, facts, like hard data, numbers, and then some of it is opinionated. It's my opinion, right? So some of it is subjective and some of it is factual. So uh, let's start with cap space. That's something that isn't subjective. This is factual. These are hard numbers, right? So um, cap space-wise, you want to be in a healthy spot if you're trying to att attract a GM. Um, it, 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 it can be a deterrent. It doesn't have to be, but it can be a deterrent when trying to lure a GM there. I want to be able to come in and have flexibility. I don't want to come in and have to dig myself out of a hole immediately. But again, if you're going to turn the roster over anyway, that's probably going to help you get yourself where you need to be from a, a cap situation. Um, it's not impossible. And again, if you're going to find someone that's willing to do it, but it still makes it a lot harder to attract the type of talent that you probably are looking for if you are going after a top-tier um, GM candidate. That said, fourth is the uh, Las Vegas Raiders. They're ninth in the league with uh, $55 million worth of cap space, so they've got quite a bit of flexibility there. Uh, the Las Vegas Raiders have nine total picks. They have the 13th overall pick, it's going to be interesting to see what they do with that 13th overall pick because the, the real question is, when are you going to get a quarterback? Are you going to get one in free agency? Is Russell Wilson going to fit what you're trying to do? You know, or are you going to get one in the draft? Uh, so th that remains to be seen, but that's an interesting situation there in Vegas. So now we get to what I think is the most important question. If you are a perspective GM or head coach. I think these are the, this is the category that if you're a co head coach, this is the one you're looking at the most because if you don't have this, then I better have resources to get this or I'm not going to be successful. Right. And it's quarterback. Do you have a quarterback? Raiders don't have a quarterback. And then my last category that I, took into consideration when making um, up my list of these openings and where they rank, organizational stability slash owner, right? So how stable is your organization and how is your owner perceived around league circles? Do you have good ownership, trustworthy ownership, um, patient ownership, et cetera, et cetera? Is the owner going to allow you to make the decisions the moves that you want to make without meddling. These are the types of things you have to ask yourself if you're a potential GM or even a head coach. Because if you have a very meddlesome head coach or, or owner, he's going to not only meddle in the affairs of the general manager, but it's going to trickle down to you and personnel decisions and what you can and can't do on the field, who's playing, who's not playing, those types of things. You never want to be in that situation. So that's something that I would take into consideration uh, when I'm assessing these openings. So I I rated these jobs in, in this particular category, um, owner or organizational stability slash owner on a scale of one to five, five being the highest stability 
you're as functional and stable as it gets in the NFL to one, which is as dysfunctional as it gets. And it, you would like to stay as far away from that job, if at all possible. Uh, the Raiders, uh, organizational stability slash owner is 3.5, three and a half. Um, the biggest problem with the Raiders is that Mark Davis is broke. I actually don't think he's a bad owner. And he's one of these guys that he's not a football guy. So he's like, let me hire football people so I can just get the hell out of the way and handle the business side of things. So you want an owner like that because he's not going to tell you what to do. He's just going to hire you. And he's going to move the hell out of the way. Now, the problem with that is he hired John Gruden. He moved the hell out of the way. And then Gruden ended up, you know, turning it, turning the clock back to 2001 and had the Raiders playing football like we were still talking about three yards in a cloud of dust. However, by the time Gruden ended up being gone, they had turned themselves into a playoff team. Now, you know, with Gruden having so much power, the organization and the pieces fit John Gruden's DNA. So when he left, they had to turn it over. Josh McDaniels came in. He turned the organization over to two expatriate guys. It was a disaster. Luckily enough for him, he was smart enough to recognize that it was a hell in the, it was going to hell in the handbasket. Got rid of those two, and now he's starting anew. I hope he learned his lesson because they had Rich Basaccia the last time. He was the right man for the job at that time. They moved on from Rich Basaccia, and it was a disaster. Hopefully, he learned from that. We'll see what happens. Um, but I don't think he's a bad owner. Um, you go to number six. And this one was tough for me because um, I this was a toss-up. I, I could have gone either way here, but um, I put the Raiders job at six. And here's why. Got great cap space, ninth overall. Uh, 55 million. That's a lot of cap space. They also have a GM job. We'll talk about that here in a second, but that, that to me matters more for the GM position than it does the head coaching position. Um, they've got nine total draft picks, including the 13th overall pick in the 2024 NFL draft. That helps a lot because, you know, the next question and category I'm going to talk about quarterback, which they don't have, you could maybe solve that with the 13th overall pick, right? Um, now, how does the draft shake out? Do you move up and try to get one of these quarterbacks? Do you stay at 13 and just see what happens? And do you like some of these secondary quarterbacks? Do you like them at 13? Well, are you going to wait to the second round? I mean, what are you going to do? Quint Ewers uh, went back to school, which is what we all anticipated him doing. Was he even a needle mover anyway? Don't know. But I, like I said, with him and J.J. McCarthy, they're going to add substance and depth to the draft overall at the quarterback position. If they go back to school, there's less to pick from. So a team like the Raiders, who's on the outside looking in of the big, the big, you know, three or four quarterbacks in the draft, you then have to assess, you know, what the secondary draft market looks like for these quarterbacks. One less name to pick from with Quinn Ewers going back to school. Um, I still think it's an interesting job. Nonetheless, uh, ownership isn't bad. The roster is actually I think it's an actually talented roster. I think you can do some good things with the Raiders. It's just a quarterback situation that has me a little bit puzzled because to me, this is a Raiders roster that's set up to win right now. This isn't a, hey, come in here and I'm going to give you three or four years to turn it around. No, you got guys like Josh Jacobs, who, again, is going to be a free agent. But if, if they handle all of this correctly, he should be back. Right. Um, you got Devontae Adams, who showed you last year, hey, I want to win and I want to win now. And if you're not planning on doing that, let me out of here. Free me. Right. And you, again, Max Crosby, all of these pieces that they have, Jacoby Myers, those guys are ready to win now. Okay. So um, it's a veteran roster. Not He's not a ton of young guys. I think you are in a tough spot because you're going to have to go get yourself either a veteran quarterback in free agency, or you're going to have to draft a young quarterback. If the veteran comes in there and you trust him, you might have something. If you got to go the draft route, you could be in a little bit of trouble because, again, this roster, they're ready to win and you bring a young guy in there and he's not you know, up to speed with the rest of the roster. It could cause conflict with this Raiders job, which is why I have it at sixth currently. Now, if they make the right move with head coach, who knows? I have it as the second best GM job available this offseason with all the cap space, with all the draft capital. You know, with the ownership situation being what it is, 
it's it's a it's a pretty decent GM job, I think, personally. Um, so second for GM out of four uh, openings, sixth for the Raiders overall for the head coaching vacancy. Um, now I'm going to take the liberty to take it a step further, and I'm going to give you who I think. This is not who I think is going to end up there. I'm telling you who I think is the best fit for these jobs. OK, again, keep in mind, understand what I'm saying. I'm not telling you this is who I think the franchise is going to hire. This is who I think is the best hire for the job. OK, uh, the Raiders job is next to me. They've already got the right man for the job. It's Antonio Pierce. If it's not broken, do not fix it. He's got the locker room. He's got. The, first of all, he's the only man that can control Jack Jones. OK, had him in high school. Jack Jones is a hothead. He was a hothead in college. He's a hothead in high school. The Patriots moved on from him. Why? Because he's a hothead. He's shown he's a hothead in the NFL. How many times has Antonio Pierce had to walk on the field to get this man to calm down? But he's a damn good football player. And as I've said, it's, it's cool to have Boy Scouts, but you need you just need some dudes rough around the edges. You need some dudes that sometimes you got to remind them, hey, this is a game, bro. This ain't real life. Like, we ain't trying to hurt nobody out here, Right? We ain't trying to get into a fight. They got a couple of those on the roster, including Jack Jones, super talented. Antonio Pierce is the only guy that can get through this man. You want him on the roster, you need Antonio Pierce. But that's not the only reason you keep him. He, he got guys that were checked out mentally, like Devontae Adams, to check back in. He got guys that were already checked out, like Josh Jacobs, to check back in, who want to come back. Guys like Max Crosby believe in the message that he's preaching. He turned that Raiders team from a desolate black hole to the black hole. They're back and they can win games. They went to Kansas City and beat the Chiefs, something they hadn't done in like five, six years. Antonio Pierce is the right man for the job. All right. Get him a quarterback. Bring back Josh Jacobs. And they got a shot. So. I, I hope they learned their lesson from last time. I, I'm hearing all this Jim Harbaugh talk and that's cool. Right. It's cool to go after the big fish, the big name. It's right here, bro. You had Rich Basaccia and you F that up. Don't F it up this time. Your guy is already in the building. Now, what you do at GM, don't know. And maybe it's a package deal. You had the brother in the in the, in the GM uh, interim GM role. Maybe he stays there. But to me, Antonio Pierce is the man for the job there. Mm -hmm.